This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effect plugins, titling, video editing, and workflow tools for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking about the newly released 2019.9 update to Avid Media Composer. In this lesson, we're going to check out all the new features so that you are in the know when you are ready to make an update to this newly released version. All right, let's command or alt and tab into Avid Media Composer. And the first place that we're starting is in our bin. Now we are familiar with being able to come in and change that bin background color. I'm going to navigate down to set background color. And you'll notice that not only do we have the ability to set the background color, but now we also have the ability to get in and choose custom colors with our color picker or the color wheels. Now, obviously this will vary slightly based on the operating system that you are using. I am on a Mac, so I do see the Mac version of this. Windows friends, you will see the Windows equivalent of this window. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this magenta or purple and I'm just going to say OK. And once I do, I want to draw your attention to the fact that not only is the background purple, but if you take a look at the tab of the bin, it now matches the background color of the bin. So this way, if you're an editor that organizes by color, you're easily going to be able to see when you're in a different bin what the color of the background in that bin is. Now I did also mention that if we come in, for example, when choosing the background color of the bin, we have our custom color selector. We also have that option across anywhere that we can get in and set colors. You'll see it here as well. If I come down to the track, you'll see inside a track color, there it is as well. So you can now get in set custom colors wherever you have access to it inside of the editing application. Now, because I am not one that's big on background colors, I'm going to set that to none just to get everything back to my very exciting gray and slightly lighter gray color. Now, another great feature, and this is one that I've actually been hoping was going to be implemented for a while, is this. Now, we're accustomed to, and I've got my statistics view up here. When we're scrolling across, I might say, oh, okay, for clip number you know A070C007, I need to see a specific value. So I start dragging across and I'm like, oh, which clip was that again? So I'm constantly dragging back and forth. And what I'd really like to be able to do is to basically cut the bin off here so that when I scroll across, I can still see the clip name to line it up with whatever parameter I want to see. Well, now we have the ability to do that. You'll see that I actually have a left bin lock and I can drag that right over here to the edge of the name right there. Now, once I put that left bin lock right there, now when I start to drag, you'll see that anything that's to the left of that will stay stationary and anything to the right will move across. This is a super handy one, one that I'm actually very happy that they've implemented in the new version of Media Composer. Now, one thing that we also now have the ability to do, and to be honest, my project is fairly basic. I only have three bins in here, but obviously editors are going to be working on huge projects with, you know, possibly even 100 bins. And sometimes you just need to quickly find the bin. Now, inside, I don't call it the project window, but inside of the bin container where you are working. So now what we have the ability to do is to right click and say, show bin in sidebar. So we can basically say, show bin in sidebar, boom, there's the bin right there. Also, I know that editors like to hold on to that project window. And as much as our sidebar is the project window, what we now also have the ability to do is to actually call up a project window that will show us all of the bins, folders, etc. that are in our project. And of course, if I happen to have these bins closed, I can open bins from here. Now you'll notice that they don't open in a sidebar in the project window. And the project window really has no impact on anything other than the ability to open bins and to see what is going on in the project. All right, now I'm just going to close that. What I'm also going to do here is to call up my settings. Let's navigate down to our interface settings, which are located right here. You'll now see this window looks a little bit different. We now have a tabbed view 
just that it's a little bit easier to get access to the settings we want for the interface when working with these windows. Now, sticking with settings, what I'm going to do is come down to our timeline settings and just draw your attention right down here to the bottom to the timeline text color. We now have the ability to set the timeline text color to be white, black, or white and black timeline text based on what exactly is going on. So based on the color of the clip, based on whether we have it in segment mode selected with you know our segment tool, this is gonna get in and change the color of the timeline text accordingly, just so that it's a little bit easier to see. What I'm gonna do now is just say, okay, I'm going to close our settings. I'm just gonna come back to, I think it was bin two that had a sequence in it. Yes, it is. You'll now also notice that if we come down here that our solo and our mute buttons are now much more compact, stuck right beside each other, just to give you a little bit easier access to it. Now, I also wanna draw your attention to the top of the timeline window, where if you take a look to the right over here, past where I have my current command selected, we now have the ability to get in and to add more bin commands or more custom composer commands in here, pretty much anything that we could need from the command palette. All right, next, let's jump back to our bin. I'm gonna switch over to frame view here. Now you'll notice that I have my frames fairly small here. What we now have the ability to do is to make these frames even larger than we have before. And obviously keep in mind at any time you can play those clips from a bin by simply clicking on one of them and hitting the space bar. And what we also have the ability to do is to right click on any clip that we have in frame view and we can come down and set its color right here I'll just set it to be something like, oh, I don't know, yellow. So this way, when we switch back to our list view, you'll see that that clip color is now set from basically setting it inside of frame view. All right, a couple things to wrap things up here. What we now also have the ability to do is to come down to our fast menu. You'll see that we now have the ability to get in and to even change the segment selection color. So for example, when I have segment mode selected and I select a clip, this is how we're accustomed to seeing it but maybe I'd like it to be that color yellow. So what we can do is simply come in, come to segment selection, say use custom color. I'm just gonna brighten this up and I'm just gonna pick super bright yellow. So this way, when we get in, utilize that tool, it's going to make the color whatever color we select it to be. Now also with that, I'm just gonna turn selection tool off for a segment or segment mode. I'm just gonna mark an in and out point again. That is gray, what we're accustomed to seeing we can now change the mark IO section again to be a custom color. Let's just brighten that up. We'll set it to be yellow again, and you'll now see. Again, it's just about making the user interface even more customizable to let you work the way that you want to work inside of Media Composer. Now, last but certainly not least, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a frame. I'm going to right click. We're going to come down to export. I wanna draw your attention to the fact that when we come into our options and I choose a graphic file, you'll notice this window has been streamlined to now give us pretty much only bitmap, Cineon, JPEG, Photoshop, PICT, PNG, and TIFF files to export, which also corresponds to the type of graphics files you can import. A few of those have been stripped out just to streamline the whole process. And that basically rounds out the new features inside the newest version of Media Composer 2019.9, the September update, sneaking in right in there at the end of the month. All right, now as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you to check out our sponsors, Video Guys, for all of your Avid software and hardware, as well as thousands of other products that you can check out over at videoguys.com. I also want to give a big shout out to the team at Boris FX, makers of BCC, Sapphire, and Mocha, and don't forget to use that coupon code of MC101 to get 10% off your next BCC license. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and don't forget, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, don't hesitate to send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.